This is Pet Life Radio. Let's talk pets. Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Groomer Humor on Pet Life Radio. We are your hosts, I'm Rudy V, along with Anthony Ray. Guys, in this episode, we're going to be talking about possibly opening up your own dog grooming business. What a great idea, right? Have you been working for somebody and you want to start your own thing? Are you fresh out of dog grooming school and you want to go right into business? Do you want to work for somebody for a while? Well, you know what? We're going to answer some of those questions, the do's, the don'ts. We also have our very funny comment section coming right up on this episode of Groomer Humor. Does your dog itch, scratch, stink, or shed like crazy? Come to Dynavite for help. Order a 90-day supply of Dynavite. Dynavite for life. Pick up two tubes of Doggo Suds. Get the third tube free. Peppermint, tea tree, lavender, Doggo Sud shampoo. Made with all natural coconut, jojoba, aloe. Great for healthy skin and soft, shiny coats. But no itchy, harsh chemicals. Lather up, rinse away. Try Doggo Suds. Buy two, get one free. At Dynavite.com. D-I-N-O-V-I-T-E dot com. Let's Talk Pets on PetLifeRadio.com. Welcome back to Groomer Humor on Pet Life Radio. As always, once again, guys, we're your hosts. I'm Rudy V, along with Anthony Ray. Man, hey, Ant, I have to say right off the bat, man, I'm loving your hair today. You're not wearing a, a, a stinky Mets hat. What's going on? Are you saying stinky because the Mets suck, or are you saying stinky because I wear the same hat all the time? Clarify. I, both. Oh, thanks. Both. Stinky and stinky. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's really hot out, and so far, you're the third person to say today, you look so different without a hat on. But my hair drives me nuts. It gets in my eyes all the time. So, you know, I don't know. I'm, you, you know the mailman, Mark, our producer, hey, you're not wearing a hat today. I don't know. I wear hats that often. I guess it's just like muscle memory. You kind of look like, I don't think your muscles have many memories, but I, wow. I, I just, God, you just, you, you open it up there, you know, you just yeah. leave me. But here's the thing, dude, you would make a really pretty girl. You have like, like, like female hair. Hmm. I'm, I'm not sure at all how to respond to that. <laughs> but it's, it's true. You have like really nice, like hair for mm-hmm. like, you could, you could be a girl and be, didn't you dress up for Halloween one time as a girl? Twice. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, we all my friends, we all did it for one year, and then this, and then the next year, I Twice. said, "Hey guys, let's do it again," and nobody did it with me, and they just went, "Okay, dude, that was last year. Enough now." You know, and right. I said, "What?" But I liked it. It was fun. <laughs> You're getting into it, you know? <laughs> yeah, because we all looked hysterical. We all looked so funny, and I thought it was a great idea. So I was like, guys, we're totally doing that again, right? And they were like, yeah, no, nah, I don't nah. know. So then <laughs> Halloween came, and I was the only one who did it a second year, and I had gained weight, too. So now I'm like, <laughs> now I'm just like the loner <laughs> in, in drag, and nobody else is nobody else is dressed up like that. Well, there, listen, there's nothing wrong with you know touching base with your feminine side every once sure. in a while. You know what I'm saying? You got you got to do it, right? I mean, you yeah. know, it was very freeing, and I liked it. And you know what? I don't even care. I'll do it again. <laughs> I should have entered a show. Yeah, you know, I won. Maybe you could become a, like a drag queen or something. They're making a lot of money, so yeah. Why? yeah. I mean, like, hey, I could I could use go for it. extra cash. They're fun. Yeah, they are fun. Yeah, I've been to, I've I've been to those shows before. They're fun. I watch the RuPaul. RuPaul's the best. The best. I mean, come on. It's hysterical, <laughs> hysterical show. I remember the first time I watched that, I was like, "What the hell is going on here?" And I, yeah. the next thing you know, I'm through the entire season. I'm like, it's "Well, it. this show is just fantastic. I love it." Rupe's got it going on. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? I like it. Well, so I had my th- my feminine features. I like them. Yeah. Well, th- th- see, this is what's funny about our show, guys, is that we do this, and now we have to talk about, <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. <laughs> trying to open up your own dog grooming shop. 
So um, I like that. A- Some people probably clicked on this one and said, I think I think they messed up because this episode was supposed to be about opening your own dog grooming business. But apparently Anthony's a drag queen. They're not <laughs> they're not talking about dog grooming yet. What the hell? <laughs> well, <laughs> one way or another, we have to try to mesh it. So yeah, right. Let's get into it. This is for you dog groomers out there, guys. If you guys are interested in opening up your own dog grooming store, it's very important that we follow some certain guidelines, right? Like first and foremost, you know, possibly be a dog groomer. So you know, well, that, that would help. That might help. You know, like you don't want to be a you know own a liquor store and try to open a dog grooming shop if you know what i'm saying so yeah being a dog groomer definitely gives you a leg up when trying to open a dog grooming business it's definitely puts you a step ahead i would i would think yeah it helps you know yeah right don't be a plumber and then yeah or like or an airline pilot yeah see this is very good information that nobody would know thank god thank god for our show because (laughs) that's why our show they know how would they know that's why our show is so informative, and yeah. we we really appreciate you guys tuning in. Yeah, it, that what what a mind blowing step one: be a dog groomer. Be a dog groomer. Right. Uh, no, but seriously, guys, um, if you guys are interested in opening up your own dog grooming business, I think that uh, right off the bat, you really have to have that confidence level. Um, you got to be that leader. You got to be that alpha. Uh, you know, you, you want to be that, you know, that bald eagle, uh, you know, someone who's, who's a go getter, you know, but in saying that though, you also want to have the right attitude. Uh, like if you have employees and stuff like that, you know, like don't boss them around, you know what I mean? Like, like Anthony bosses me around all the time, you know? Yeah. Well, be better. (laughs) Hey, you're the bald eagle. (laughs) You know, so. <laughs> oh my god yes don't even give me that you cut me deep right away in this episode telling me <laughs> i have no muscle memory i am i'm feminine you know i have girl hair you got right to right right to work on me as soon as we started this show can't you're, wait you're, for it to be over already <laughs> you're soft in all the right places again there we go whatever bald eagle bald eagle bald eagle oh god we're such a good pa- i love you aunt you're, 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 <laughs> you're such a you're such a good son uh but no but seriously guys here's the thing as we mentioned in our episodes and in our podcasts and our grooming channel grooming by rudy on youtube we're all for this industry and and we want to see more people succeed in this whether it is owning your own business or working for somebody we want to see more dog groomers out there because there's going to be a huge necessity for it especially in the near future but again if you do want to be that business owner uh, there's a lot of things that you know come into play first and foremost you know you want you want to be well trained as we always talk about you, you seriously, you do want to be a dog groomer. I wouldn't suggest, and I, I'm not even kidding about this. I wouldn't suggest not being a dog groomer and trying to do this business because you really, this is the kind of business you really have to know. You have to be a part of. I wouldn't be the type of person that kind of, you know, just wants to do this on the side and, uh, you know, open up a dog grooming shop just for money. I don't believe that it's that type of industry. I think that there has to be more passion involved. So seriously, I think you should be a dog groomer. With that being said, though, right off the bat, legality. You know, what are the legal statues in your state? Because they differ from state to state. Uh, You may have to be licensed. You may not have to be licensed. With all of that being said, though, I think you should be trained. So dog grooming school slash business. My suggestion is uh, if you are fresh out of dog grooming school, you might not want to go right into business right away unless you're experienced and you have a lot of experience. You might want to work for somebody for a little bit, gain some experience, gain some knowledge, gain some speed because, hey, listen, you have to make money, you know, so, uh, you know, you're not going to make a whole lot of money doing a couple of dogs a day. You're, you got to get that your grooming speed up to par. So uh, I, w- I would highly suggest people maybe work for somebody for a little bit, maybe six months, a year, and then kind of entertain the thought of uh, maybe opening up your own business. But let's get into some of the legal aspects of it. Again, it varies from state to state. So insurance. Guys, you have to be insured. 
You just have to be insured. Don't try to do this business. Don't try to uh, just wing it and uh, and then think that something might not happen. In this business, there is injury, regardless of how good you are, how, how careful you are. You're dealing with blades, clippers, all of that fun stuff. Dogs are moving around. If you're going to be a dog groomer, it's guaranteed you are going to nick a dog or cut a dog here or there. It just happens. So insurance is a big big uh, necessity if you're going to open up your own dog grooming business. God forbid something happens to a dog or yourself. Um, You want to be insured. So that's a number one thing there. I mean, Mm -hmm. absolutely. Because you never really know (laughs) insurance is thing. You don't skimp on that. Like, for example, especially like you said, like if something happens to yourself, 10 years ago, if you knew the top of your head was going to look the way it does now, you would have got insurance for the top of your head. We're still doing that. A little. <laughs> We're still doing that. Uh, a little. Well, you know, that's true. Um, and, <laughs> but that's true. <laughs> it's very, very true. It's, yeah. a, it's a true statement. You should have taken out a policy, a follicle policy. I didn't know. Yeah. And who would know? Because I had hair like you at one point. You know what I mean? I got cocky about it. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah, right. And, was, and this is what happens when you live on the edge. You end up being yeah. a bald eagle. I was one of those guys that, you know, <laughs> you love my hair, don't you? <laughs> yeah, very sexy, sexy, long hair. Don't you wish that you had my hair? <laughs> Apparently, when you had hair, you were a Russian as well. <laughs> you like my locks. You like my locks. <laughs> and, and then, then when you lost it, you became Italian. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I used to have hair. <laughs> long time ago, you know, I had hair, right? I mean... <laughs> Look, look at my pictures. See, I got pictures to prove it, right? Yeah. Look, look at this one. Hey, where you going? Hold up. <laughs> <laughs> Don't leave. Don't, Don't leave. Don't leave. Look at this one. Look, I had hair. <laughs> so let's get back into it. Ann. I'm sorry. You sorry gave, not, like, like, hey, like, like you said at the beginning of this episode, oh, you left me wide open. <laughs> left we'll it wide open, Dad. <laughs> Muscle memory. You don't have muscles. Shut up. Uh, all right, so listen, I wish I would have taken out insurance on my hair follicles. I there did. you go. I didn't, and this is what happened. This is so, what happened. You guys so, don't want this to happen to you, believe me. Yeah, you don't want this to happen to you, so if you are opening up a dog grooming business, please get insurance. You have to be licensed. You have to be insured. Register your business. Do all of that legal work that you have to do before you even get started. You don't want to play around with this. You'll get in trouble, guys. Oh, and here's another thing. By all means, please pay your taxes. Okay, let's say you start this business and you're making some money. Please pay your taxes. You don't want to, you know, you know, you don't want to Martha Stewart it. You don't want a Mike situation in any way, shape, or form. You know what I'm saying? If they could lock them up, trust me, they'll lock us up too. You know what I'm saying? So poor Sitch. Poor Sitch. Is he still in? I don't know. I think he's getting out soon. We met him that one time. He was the nicest guy. I love situation. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I can't wait till he gets out because I, I want him to. I hope he gets out so he can enjoy some of the summer that's left over here in Jersey because it's, man, it's nice here now. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's really so we're, hot. Yeah. And hence the no hat. Yeah. We're rooting for you, Sitch. Don't worry. Hang in there, man. Yeah. You're getting Hang out. in there, man. We're don't all let him wait- get to you. Don't let him get you. We're all <laughs> waiting for you, buddy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I had, the, I had the luxury of meeting uh, Mike situation down in long branch uh last year and a re- very very nice guy very good guy i got to work with Vinny doing yeah. comedy that one time Vinny is funny man. yeah oh well, my god that whole jersey short crew just uh yeah. we love you guys they're all so cool yeah you guys are so cool so but definitely um so yeah so you want to get all that stuff in order and uh who knows you might be starting out your own dog grooming business you may start out a lot of people work out of their house for example, if you're that person that is working out of your house, I guess you have a little bit of an edge because, you know, if you don't have much of an overhead, you can, you know, uh, charge less. Uh, you can charge less money than somebody who's renting out a storefront like me. Is it fair? I don't know. Uh, listen, it's up to you. Uh, there, there are certain states where you can do things like that. And, you know, if you live out in PA and, you know, things kind of possibly work that way out there. Here in Jersey, where we are, we're in the tri-state area. You know, you got to try to do 
things right because is it really fair that somebody's working out of their house they don't have any overhead and you know they could charge you know 40 50 bucks a dog and then the guy like me who has this huge overhead you know i gotta hit you up for 70 bucks because listen i, I have to try to make money you know but um either way it's up to you guys however you want to start but even if you are working out of your house try to get all of that the legal stuff you know in order and protect yourself so that they don't take your car. Um, <laughs> car. <laughs> hey, hey, where's my? Yeah, but uh, yeah, and, and in my opinion, you want to LLC yourself, LLC, uh, limited liability corporation. You kind of want to separate yourself from your business in some fashion. This way, uh, if you do get sued by any chance or whatever, you know, again, they're not, uh, you know, taking your car and, and the hammock that you just hung up in the backyard last summer. You know what I mean? Don't get me started on the hammock. <laughs> you, you guys know how much we love hammocks. <laughs> yeah. Dumbest freaking invention. So stupid. So stupid. <laughs> And it, it's probably like just some normal dude to you know, Theodore Hammock who invented it in you know, it. whatever in the 1700s, and it's it was stupid then. They should call it the the spine breaker. Yeah, they should call it the uh, lay down to relax within a split second. You're face down in the dirt. Cause, <laughs> cause it's the, so stupid, so stupid. Uh, Take the hammocks down. Any of you who have a hammock, I can't believe we're even talking about this again, but any of you who have a hammock, take, take it down. Take, take it down, down right hammock. now. It's, it's dumb. It's dumb. Stop it. Well, listen, I'm sure that there's like a hammock club out there that we're going to get a lot of beef from now, Anthony. You know what That's I mean? No problem. I'll go to the debate. I'll, 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 I, I accept all the charges. Absolutely. Yes. <laughs> you, know, you, wouldn't say this, you wouldn't say this about the Star Wars guys. You know what I mean? Forget about it. We'd be, you know, we'd be Luke Skywalker right off the planet, so... This, yeah. We got to calm down. There's a, there's Star Wars a, is another one. Come there's on, not, stop. There's a hammock club out there. We don't want to be offensive to the hammock club out there. So <laughs> all right. I don't know, man. The thing is, is I've, I've backflip tumbled off of every hammock that I've ever tried to sit on. So I, how am I supposed to support them? So have I. <laughs> yeah, they're stupid. It's like uh, trying to sleep on a tire swing. Good luck. <laughs> Sorry, we're getting off track. Uh, we're always getting off track here. So let's get back into this. Okay, let's assume let's assume that we have, you know, all of our our legality is situated here. Let's say, you know, we're we're going to uh, start this dog grooming business. All right, guys, I think if you're going to start this, you want to have some established customers. Okay, don't just do this and not have any customers at hand. You got to try to have an established clientele, even if it's a small one that will carry you for a while. Either that or have definitely have some buffer money just in case, uh, you know, you're not getting the, the amount of dogs that you were hoping for right off the bat. Or, you know, you're just not able to groom that many dogs just yet. Uh, but if you are starting out with this. You may want to uh, kind of establish a, a small clientele prior to tell them about your new location, be excited about it, have a grand opening, do a little advertising, definitely. I mean, you know, you, whatever's in your area, you might want to do like a money mailer or, or a local advertisement, uh, maybe for in a school or something like that. Uh, help them out. It'll help you out. Uh, but definitely get the word out that you have started this business. But again, let's just say we did all that work. And now we're ready to roll. Okay, in this business, there are a lot of factors. Uh, so if you're talking about doing a business, although this is a labor of love, at the same time, it is a business. Make no mistake, guys. We, we need to make money. This is a profession that we chose. It's very hard work. And we do need to make money to continue the services, right? So what's your profit margin? You have to be making a profit. If you're not making a profit, Guys, you're going to bury yourself in no time with this. So uh, let's incorporate some of the expenses. If you are like me and you have a high overhead where you're paying a rent, right off the bat, that has to be a big factor in, you know, when you're doing your running your numbers, you definitely want to factor that in. But on top of that, again, guys, you got insurance, uh, you have accounting that you have to deal with, you have supplies, shampoos, clippers. Uh, cages, all kinds of supplies, you know, your clipper lube, your, your maintenance, all of these things really, really add up, especially when, you know, a, a good quality 
shampoo could cost, you know, 20, 25 bucks, 30 bucks a gallon. You know, you go through a gallon real, real quick. So again, what is your profit margin? Make sure that everything you're putting out, you're at least making some profit per dog. And at the end of the week, you know, you're able to uh, take yourself to the buffet. If not, don't do it. Don't do any business. Okay. So that being said, what is a good profit? All right. Well, listen, you probably should try to base yourself on at least making a 30 to 40 percent profit per dog that's an average and you know what it's not it's not a whole lot it's really not a whole lot so you have to consider that this isn't a huge money maker and we've mentioned this in the past it should be it should we but we we should be making one hundred fifty thousand dollars a year but we're just not there yet but With shows like this and with the grooming industry growing, I think groomers should be paid a a whole lot more and their profit margin should be 75%. And and in some cases, it is. It depends, again, where you live and how expensive your overhead is. Uh, California, those margins might be. California, maybe, I think. Sure, sure. Um, Because they have huge overhead there, but... The, their salons, I mean, and their celebrity dogs getting groomed. So it's the right. margins are probably much better over there. Yeah, absolutely. You know, again, though, we're in this business to, of course, you know, enhance and do a good job and clean the dogs and uh, make money. So there are a lot of hidden costs, too. For example, you know, your clippers are just going to, they're going to wear out. You know, your blades wear out. All those little hidden costs are going to come into play too, where you're putting money out for a new set of clippers unexpectedly. Uh, like we always say, around the holiday season, around our busy season, I always invest in a new set of clippers. I sharpen my scissors. You got to prepare. But I want to talk a little bit about how much an initial cost might be to open up your own dog grooming business. Again, guys, it varies. It varies where you live. It varies where what type of equipment you're looking for. Are you looking for really high-end equipment? Are you looking to do 10 dogs a day, 15 dogs a day, or as opposed to the person who is working out of their garage or their basement that might only be doing three or four dogs a day? You may not need uh, this real high-end equipment. So again, it depends. So it varies. But with, say, a set of cages, let's say, you know, you want a Ted and cage unit, let's say you want to invest in some better quality equipment, good scissors, guide scissors, some good Andes clippers, some really good quality blades, which I suggest just makes the grooming come out better and it's easier, uh, good quality shampoos. I would say an initial investment in opening up your own dog grooming business could vary anywhere between, say... $15,000 to $20,000 initially. Maybe a little less. You could get in possibly for 10000 something like that, if you wanted to do it right and you wanted to get yourself some really good equipment to work with. So again, that's not a lot though. That really isn't a lot. And you know, uh, when you compare it to say opening up a liquor store, you know, you, you, you got to go in, you have to have at least 150 thou, you know, to open up a, a liquor store or even say, uh, you know, a, a mechanic, you know, I mean, just think about the amount of money that you would have to invest in opening up a place to, to be a mechanic. I mean, like tools and things like that. So and space, you need so much space to do that stuff. Yeah, yeah. So with all things considered and the, the businesses that are out there, that's a, a really low cost startup. You know what I'm saying? You know what really surprised me? I was looking through, I forget what magazine it was. Uh, it was a couple months ago when me and you were, we were looking into getting some uh, cage upgrades for the store. Yeah, which we desperately I, need. Yeah, I cannot believe, you, you'd be surprised at how expensive cages are. Those units where you know sure. you could put five or ten, whatever. Wow, yeah, a couple up, thousand dollars for, three a, grand. for a good, yeah, yeah for a cage up around, unit. They're up around $3,000 for a, real, a nice cage unit. You know, yeah, grooming tables, you know, it depends. You know, if you want a, a nice, even hydraulic, manual hydraulic grooming table, you know, you're looking about $300, $400. If you're looking for an electric one, I mean, you're looking at $1,500, you know, or more for a nice electric grooming table. But again, you know, you could work your way up to these things too. You don't have to start with this. When I started, I mean, I had a portable grooming table and I was working out of my basement for a while. But as you, you know, you have to be smart with your money with this too, because 
anything you do make, you know, try to save, try to save, reinvest, you know, get that nice hydraulic grooming table that you deserve. That's going to make your job easier, you know? Yeah. But initially you don't have to just go all out. You can start low. You can get yourself some less expensive equipment uh, and work your way up, you know, work your way up uh, if you don't have the money. And uh, it's a good business to get into though, like I said, because the initial cost, the it's not that bad. It's just not that bad. And, and if you do go lower end, if you do start off with a portable grooming table and a couple of cages, listen, you can start doing this for even less than that. You can start doing it for under $5,000 and work your way up, you know, to better equipment and maybe a storefront. Like we, it, it took me forever to do a storefront, right, Ant? I mean, yeah, yeah. I, you know, but again, guys, this is just such a great business to get into. If you are a dog groomer out there, like you said, if you're working for somebody for a real long time and you want to do your own thing, you might want to take a chance, you know, uh, or not, or not. If you're a dog groomer and you're comfortable working for somebody, that might be the thing for you too. You know, it might not be a business thing. Uh, you might want to just, you know, go in, do your job and bounce, man, you know, and, you know, get your check at the end of the week and uh, and not have the worries of, uh, of all this. Like I said, you, you know, you got to be that, that alpha. You, you want to be that leader. You want to be the confident business owner if you're going to venture off into this, you know. There's a lot less pressure when you don't own your own. But- sure. It depends on what you want out of it, really. It's a very gratifying job one way or the other. That's, That's right. That's the best part about it. So just being involved in the industry itself is is gratifying. And you know, a, a lot of people, whether it's mobile or storefront or whatever, a lot of people love it and want to get into it or have been into it for a while now. And yeah, I mean, it's a great job to have. It's just, it, obviously, it has its perks and it has its downfalls too, but it's gratifying at the end of the day, no matter what. So that's yep. the most important thing. Absolutely. All right. You know what I think we should do? Let's go to break. We're going to sum it up. We'll talk a little bit more about it. And, uh, you know, we'll find out a few more ins and outs uh, about owning your own dog grooming business. We'll be right back on Groomer Humor. Has your pet ever suffered from digestive issues, anxiety, or joint pain? We want to address these issues and more with high-grade CBD oil from Alpha made specifically for your furry friends. Using Alaskan salmon oil as a carrier, Alpha Pet's 500 CBD oil is lab-tested for quality, consistency, and safety. Plus, we are giving Pet Life Radio listeners 25% off and free shipping with code PL25 for a limited time. So visit myalphacbd.com slash dogs now. That's myalphacbd.com forward slash dogs. Because your furry friends are family. Let's talk pets. Let's talk pets. On Pet Life Radio. Pet Life Radio. Pet Life Radio. Dot com. Welcome back to Groomer Humor on Pet Life Radio. I am your host, Anthony Ray, along with my dad, the bald eagle himself, Rudy V, <laughs> super groomer OV. <laughs> bald eagle. Bald eagle himself. So it's been a great episode so far. So we're going back and forth between messing with each other and trying to tell you guys a little bit about opening up your own dog grooming business. A lot, a lot of different avenues to this kind of stuff. Been talking about a lot of do's and don'ts. Financially, could be challenging, could not be. It depends on the equipment you go with. We went over doing things right, basically. Pay your taxes, get register yourself, get you know, get all that, all that stuff situated so that you're protected. Don't make the same mistake my dad did and not insure the top of your head, because then you lose <laughs> your hair, and then there goes that. So insurance, the biggest thing about opening a pet grooming business, because it is stressful. You will lose your hair. My dad didn't get insurance. <laughs> Man, try, hindsight 2020, you know? And that's how we come back from commercial. I like that. It. That's it. Nice and strong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. nice and strong. Couple yeah. bad jokes. A yeah. little recap. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, listen, guys, if you are planning on opening up your own dog grooming business, please, again, do your own research. It's a great business to get into. You might find yourself 
in a really great situation where your business is growing rapidly and you may have to uh, hire some employees. That's a whole different aspect when you get to that level. Uh, and a lot of you dog groomers out there already have a lot of employees. So there's a whole a whole different challenge with that. You know, you have to definitely be careful with that. And, you know, you're responsible for what they do now. So again, insurance comes into play with that and also, you know, just uh, taxation and things like that. So uh, employment policies that you would have to factor in with that if you have people working for you. But with that being said, guys, listen, anybody out there, please, we wish you the best of luck. Please uh, definitely consider dog grooming as a career. And uh, if, and if you have what it takes, man, open up your own business, you know, and, uh, and, and just skyrocket, man. Just, you know, go for broke. It's a great industry. Plus, like you said, too, just make sure, you know, again, make sure everything is in line. Because according to my dad, if you don't do it right, they can take your car. That's the example you went with earlier. Well, do, well, do, you, do you want them to take your car? Why would they take your car? Uh, I don't know. They do things like that, don't they? They take your stuff. Uh, yeah, okay? I guess. You want them to take you like do you like your car? I mean, yeah, I like my car. You need but your car. Like and I don't know they- that anybody around the world is going, you know, uh, I really want to get into dog grooming, but I don't want them to take my car away. <laughs> you know? Well, you know like, what I think why, why would they take your car? I think they should, you know, because I think it's a concern. What if you went outside and now your car's not there? Now you don't have a car. Just, you know, put it into perspective. Oh, my car is gone. Oh, I didn't pay my taxes. They took my car. Now I don't have a car. What are you going to do? Roll up on your bicycle in front of your dog grooming shop? That doesn't look too cool. Okay. doesn't look. Uh, Well, it depends on the bike. That's true. I got a nice bike. You do have a nice bike. I'm more more afraid they'll take my bike than my car. My bike is worth more than my car. (laughs) That's because... That's because your car, uh, God, I think the Jets were in the Super Bowl the last time when your <laughs> car when your car was new. <laughs> this is true. Yeah, I and got the ripped front it's seat been going. Like Fifty years since they were in the Super Bowl, so that's how old your car is. Runs like a champ, though. It does. It's faster than mine. It's a quick little. I got the Audi A4. Yeah, two thousand. The O one Audi A4. Yeah, 1. the O one. <laughs> the o, the old O one. I have a, a Volkswagen Touareg and, and good old Volkswagen zero to sixty eventually. 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 I like point. your car. Your car is nice. Me too. I gotta wash it because my neighbor enjoys feeding the birds. So uh, whenever I park in front of my house, I get uh, a lot of loads. Uh, oh, loads. Ew. Lovely. Yeah. yeah. Loads. You know what? Yeah, it's a. <laughs> it's uh, a I good get, well, birds. I guess I'll say squirts. It's a good um time for you. If you're gonna do your car, Anthony, you might want to hose yourself down too. You know, kill two birds with one stone. Thanks, Dad. It's a good opportunity for you right there. So, just all, I, I love it. And all in a matter of about 20 minutes, half an hour, I'm a stinky drag queen with a slow car. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's how I see you. That, that's, yep. That's how my father sees me. I bet you're real proud. I am. I love you either way. Doesn't matter <laughs> what you do. I love you. <laughs> it, it doesn't matter. You know, I yeah. would hide you. I just hide you. Mm. I protect you. Yeah. Oh, good. That actually, I'm going to start taking advantage of that. I got to go start stirring some stuff up. Yeah. To yeah. start making some bad decisions because my yeah, dad will hide me. If you, if you robbed a bank, I just wouldn't turn you in. I would just or, hide Of you. course you wouldn't. Why would you turn me in? You're going to be rich if I rob a bank. <laughs> there, there you go. <laughs> that, that's <laughs> just not financially responsible of you to turn me in if I rob that a would, bank. That would just be stupid. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you know, I can get a new car. Yeah. I do pass a lot of banks on the way home. <laughs> Don't say that. Yeah. <laughs> hey, let's get into our funny comment section. We got to get this comment. Uh, do you want to read this one, Anthony, or you want me to read it? What, what, what? You, you go ahead. Okay. I'm a professional. I'm going to read this one. We waited a long time on this comment. This comment was said uh, a while back, probably about uh, seven, eight months ago. But we waited on this one because it was just, I don't know. I guess we'll let you guys decide. But the comment says... My dog humps his bed a lot. Should I help him out? I don't know what to do. <laughs> help him out. Help him out. <laughs> <laughs> man. Well, here's the thing, man. Listen, if you do help him out, I would just nominate you for just, you know, pet owner of the year. Because yeah. what a beautiful th- <laughs> what a beautiful thing to do to, to help your dog in a situation like this. Um, just Sometimes you just have to lend a hand. (laughs) (laughs) 
you know. Oh, this is why we didn't read this comment because we're going to be, of course, we're going to be disgusting about it. Of course, exactly. <laughs> but you know, the poor dog. You're right, though. You sometimes you do have to lend a hand because the poor dog just doesn't have a hand. So you know, he's got paws and he's trying, and he's he's just he's just expressing himself. <laughs> <laughs> just we're no different. We're no we're different. No, we're all animals. We're all, yeah. you know, listen, we all have certain needs and wants and, and everything. But uh, a, again, as as the pet owner, I'm going to vote yay on this. Yes. You know, <laughs> I'm going to vote. I think you should help help him out. And, um, <laughs> you know, I'm not going to mention any names, but this person is very dear to us. And they're, they're an avid listener as well. Mm. So this is the reason why we waited on your comment so long. But uh, yeah, yeah. It's one of those comments. I mean, some people are going to take it wrong. Yeah. Other people are going to be like, well, that's torturous. You have to help him out. You got to help him out. He's your dog. He's your dog. He's your responsibility. And, I, I, hey, help comes. It, it, don't just say it's our dirty mind. Say, okay, because some because I'm not even just talking about it. There's a lot of different ways you could help. You get a bigger bed. <laughs> okay. Right. You know right. what I mean? You, you, could, know. you know, give him a bath, clean the area. That would help. Maybe he's just itchy. Get him a stuffed animal dog. Right, you could get him another dog. Get, get him, him another dog. Get him a little buddy, or that you know, would help. You know, yeah. female or, just, or whatever. Just breed the damn thing. I don't know. Yeah, you could breed him out. I mean, you know hey, I mean? It's, it, we're all put on this earth for specific reasons. You know, maybe yeah, it's his fate. That's let's not pretend that procreation isn't our job, guys. Come on. Yeah. Plus, you know, you could help out. Maybe you're just not home enough. Maybe he's <laughs> saying, you know what? I can't believe she went to work again. I'm humping this bed right now. <laughs> right. Maybe if you were just around a little bit more. There you go. He okay. wouldn't hump the bed. Okay. Right. Like there's a lot of different ways to help. Okay. Spend so I know what time with. Right. Me. Exactly. And we know what a lot of you guys are thinking. Oh, my God. There it goes. So, hey, your mind's going there. Maybe that that's not what we're talking about. That's right. Okay. So, you know, I'm talking sh- about other solutions. Help them out. Help okay. Them out. In Just other means ways, help them out. In, in other ways, help get them out. Something, yeah, get them a chew bone. Yeah, we're saying okay. lend a hand. Okay, if you, whatever hand you guys are thinking of. I don't know. Is that right? It's up for speculation. We're not responsible. We're just yeah. doing a show here. Mm-hmm. But anyway, thank you for the comment. That uh, we like that one. It was good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, where do we go from there? We just <laughs> we, keep doing this to ourselves every time we, we do an episode. We go where we always go. We we end end show end <laughs> yeah, scene is where we go. End that's scene. where we go. So yeah, guys, thank topic. you so much. Yes. Um, thanks so much for stopping by, guys. As always, we'd like to thank our producer, Mark Winter. Thank you so much, Mark. If you haven't already, head on over to our YouTube channel. It's called Grooming by Rudy. That's Grooming by Rudy on YouTube.com. Leave a comment, like, share, subscribe. We want to hear from you guys. You could also like Grooming by Rudy on Facebook. Follow Grooming by Rudy on Instagram and Twitter. It has been an absolute pleasure. As always, until next time, take care of yourselves and your pets. Let's Talk Pets. Every week on demand. Only on PetLifeRadio.com.